За самбац хоног үзэгчтэй ингээд Тик Патер подкастын шинхэн дугаараар эхэлж байгаа да төлийн баяртай байна. Тэгээд Silkway Acceleration хэмээх шинс сезний одоо дугаарууд өрсөлдөж явж байна. Тэгээд манай подкастын дараагийн зочноор гар утсан нэр суурилсан тоглоомыг үйлдвэрлэгч Казахстан улсаас гаралтай Eidos Games компани хамтран үүсгэн байгуулж гүйцэтгэх захирал Алексей оролцсон байна. Тэгээд Алексей мен яг Казахстаны Алматы хотос гаралтай юу тэр юу ярилцсан бэ гэхээр мэдээж одоо тухайн тоглоомын салбар Rayon уу гар утсан дээр суурилсан тоглоомын салбар одоо ямар хүн хэмжээтэй яг бид нарт одоо ямар хүн боломж байдаг тухайн ярилцсан за тэгээд цаашлаадаг энэ салбар яг крипто салбартай нийлээд эхлэхээр өшөө цааш ямар боломжууд үүсч болдог вэ гэдэг бас нь лээ гүнзгийн ярилцсан байгаад байгаа тэгээд цаашлаад а тухайн компанид одоо Казахстан улсад стартап хийж байгаа залуучууд бас ямар хүн одоо үзэлт бодолтой за итгэлийн салбарт ажилладаг хүмүүс мөн ямар хэмжээний одоо цалин урамшуултай ажилладаг за тэдгээр залуучууд юу нь төсөж мөрөөддөг вэ гэдгийг нэлээ ярилцсан байгаад байгаа тэгээ цаашлаад бас тухайн хүний хүн хүний үзэлт баримт болгоод одоо яаж одоо энэхүү санаагаа олоод хөгжүүлээд одоо тоглоомын салбарт ямар хүн зүйлүүд харж байгаа вэ гэдгийг бас нэлээ ухаж ярилцсан байгаад байгаа юм бол нэг баачих буюу одоо нийтдээ 15 компаний хурцгүй хөтөлбөр дорлогчсэн бөгөөд энэ хүү хурцгүй хөтөлбөр маань өдөр тутамдаа ямар хүү байдлаар өргөлжилж явдгийг Казахстан буюу яг тухайн улсын байгаа улсад байгаа иргэн хүний нүдээр бас хэрхэн харагддаг вэ гэдгийг ярилцсан байгаа даа маа за тэгээд подкастын шин дугаараа хөл авч үзнэ үү same batch and the company name is Eidos Games. Eidos Games and so yeah and earn to play yeah right yeah play to earn and also he's ambassador of the Binance yeah. <laughs> okay actually a lot but we're open for offers like <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's introduce yourself to them yeah uh, my name is Alexey uh, I'm the CEO of Eidos Games company also I'm the co-founder of our project uh, we're making an ecosystem of mobile games uh with cryptocurrency we got uh our own cryptocurrency called uh, IGT and we already published for now two uh, two games one of them is uh, shooter and the second was is hyper casual game i tried and it's really cool man i, I didn't know like, even the centralization guys can develop this actually we are uh, i think we're the first company who already published and launching all over the world For now we uh, already have uh, more than 170,000 users uh, all over the world and um, mo- uh, most of our um, users are from Brazil, USA and Philippines. Mm-hmm. Also uh, monthly active users are more than 47,000. For now it's thanks to our accelerator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So about the accelerator program, so what did you achieve? And- yeah, it definitely is. Um, like. Uh, you know, like uh, Alisha is like a person who is uh, um, how how could we say uh, an unusual tracker, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's got like uh, some fantastic methods that can help you to find uh, uh, all those things that you didn't notice during like your job for now, and um, uh, now we have more than fifty thousand users during these three months and uh, made lots of things lots of new features in our games that 50 or 15 50 yes oh. 50000 and um we have uh, included uh, lots of new cool features that are influencing our retention and uh, uh, people like are more uh, involved in our games yeah, that's that's great 
Yeah, that's, that's super cool. We're super we're really happy. Let us start talk about the accelerator program. Can you could you tell us more about go make some brief explanation about what is accelerator program and what is Circuit Accelerator and what we do every day and how it works like? Uh, so, um, for example, uh, I know that uh, experience of all the teams are different. So uh, let me tell how do we do. Uh, each Saturday, uh, after talking to Alisher, after the track meeting, uh, we have a call with our team and uh, like making discussion what I have learned on TM and I'm like uh, translating all those things uh, to my team. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of insights uh, did I get from the TM? And uh, after that, um, the plan that uh, we start testing all the hypotheses like we're uh, plan planned for the next week. And uh, like in the middle uh, on Wednesday, when you have uh, uh, like office hours with our tracker, uh, we're like, mm, we have a chance, each team has a chance uh, to test uh, how the hypothesis uh, works or not. Tell us about your business more. Uh, so um, we are now uh, at the stage of actually scaling because um, we have two products. Uh, Shootgun, when we first published it in July, 25th of July last year, 2021, it was the first mobile uh, first person shooter with play to earn opportunity in the world. Mm -hmm. It was the first. Uh, uh, most of uh, play to earn games uh, are like focused on uh, on web and you cannot, and uh, mo most of them uh, are like pay to play and ours is free to play. Our games are, uh, we got like three advantages, mo uh, the biggest advantages. First one is uh, our games are absolutely free. You don't need to uh, buy some I don't know, lands, NFTs or something. You just download from Google Play for now, Google Play Market, and install it and start it, start playing. The second one uh, is um, uh, you don't know, uh, you don't need to know about crypto. It's like games first, crypto later. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we're in our games, we uh, teach people how to like uh, mo most uh, most of the people in the world think like crypto is something bad or something it's like super fraud. Uh, fraud, super difficult to understand. And before the moment of withdrawing the cryptocurrency from our games, it's just a simple game. You play like having fun, enjoying the game. And after that, just uh, you're like, they collect some on your Yeah, mind. Yeah, people notice that, oh, I have won something I can withdraw like uh, to exchange and like uh, change them to USDT, BUSD and uh, other currencies. That's normal, that's okay. Yeah, it's great. And so that means if I play more, I will earn more. Yes, yes. Uh, that's the main point. And then, then I can exchange the pancake or something swap. Yeah, for now it is uh, available only on pancake swap. It's a decentralized exchange. After that, we plan to go to this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Until then, you will wear that. <laughs> yeah, actually, we have met uh, Mr. Champion Zhao. When he came, uh, when he visited, yes, yeah, CZ, yeah, someone uh, knows him as CZ. He's a founder of Binance, if he's, someone doesn't know. And um, when he was in uh, Astana, uh, when, uh, during his visit uh, of the Astana Hub, we were uh, pitching him our, our project. And also he had an interview with uh, Tengri News. Uh, it is one of the like po popular, like, uh, I don't know, med medias in Kazakhstan. And he didn't notice our project, but we were the only gaming project <laughs> in this that day. Yes, yes, that day. And he said like, uh, he was impressed because uh, Kazakhstan already have his crypto ecosystem companies and gaming companies that are super cool. Mm -hmm. And we were like, yeah, <laughs> we are the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm also interested in about the IDG token. In the future, there might be some economical, so I mean, economical flow, I mean, so they yes, just must be some, something, there must be some value about yeah. this. So. Yes, definitely, because yeah. it's a, like long-term plans. Yeah. We're not like uh, making something that, uh, like we're not project that will uh, last about two or three years and then just close, like get scammy. Okay. We're planning to make like uh, huge plans and um, in the future, uh, it will it will look like this. Do you know Steam? 
Yes, from Valve Company. Uh, we're planning to make like a Steam-like platform, Steam-like platform only, but uh, for mobile games, uh, united with single uh, market NFT marketplace, mm-hmm. single tokenomics for all the games, and uh, with IGT and IGC tokens. It are they are our tokens. A mm-hmm. uh, few words about IGT. Uh, IGT also is a governance token. For example, all uh, IGT holders. We got DAO platform, uh, decentralized autonomous organization. And for example, when we were planning to make next games, mm-hmm. uh, for example, we were, we were planning to make match three game mm-hmm. and uh, we're starting a vote for our holders, mm-hmm. uh, which setting uh, are we going to use? That, for example, like uh, uh, sim- something similar with uh, <clears throat> Gardenscapes or something like uh, uh, Cosmo theme. Uh, like space and etc yeah. and people all the igt users can vote yeah, it's, it's like the, it uh, makes people more involved in the project and uh, in the future about I, I think maybe five or ten years uh, for example when like uh, bitcoin goes down uh, there will be no influence for our tokens because uh, we got our users our games and etc mm-hmm. no influence from bitcoin so basically that means if the ecosystem has been built already, yes. let's imagine that it goes super like uh, Steam. And so I play maybe Shotgun and so other games and earn, and then I will spend my token to another things, getting another things from another platform. Like yes, also we're planning to make a multi-chain. For example, uh, you have your own ecosystem and your NFTs will be available in my game. For example, if you give uh, make uh, like legendary NFTs, you can uh, they can use it and uh, use the same benefits in our ecosystem yeah, yeah. that's like uh, cro- cross like marketing and etc and but but I, i'm sorry so i'm i have almost no knowledge about this kind of thing so i'm just a uh, traditional business at data yeah. centers and cloud computing etc so is it connected to web 3.0 yes Something definitely like what is web 3 uh, in our games For example, if you play PUBG or Fortnite games or uh, any like uh, Battle Royale uh, games, uh, all the skins, all the assets that you earn in the game uh, are connected to your account. And if you were banned by the like developer, you cannot take it off, take it from the game. And in our games, for example, all the assets are NFTs and you can use them in the whole ecosystem if it is fitable. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, look, uh, if you have, if uh, all the assets are on your crypto wallet, not uh, they are not ours. Yeah. All the things that you can earn or buy are like uh, it's yours, not ours. Mm-hmm. And that's the Web three point. Yes. We just make uh, a content for you to enjoy the game itself, mm-hmm. but the NFTs and etc. are yours. And the thing is that so about Web three and also and crypto based technologies, mm-hmm. crypto based startups and. Were you planning planning to like that from the beginning, from the day zero? You guys planned to develop only game, or maybe in the future we will implement some crypto uh, ecosystems like that? Ah, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, the story of Idos Game starts at the end of 2019. Okay. Our fo- founder and CTO Idos uh, started like coding uh, in December of 2019. And he was planning just to start, like he sold all his businesses, like a few of them. And um, he started like learning to code <laughs> from that year. And uh, another background, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, and in 2020, uh, like during the COVID, uh, he got an insight that um, he can, for example, he knows uh, how the whole market works. And uh, he just uh, started, uh, merging all those informations Mm -hmm. and he learned that he can um, uh, like unite two things like gaming and crypto he saw uh, at that time there were only two or three projects with play to earn model Mm -hmm. first is uh, axe infinity but uh, all of them uh, are for the web uh, to play in browser okay and he was wondering how to make it on mobile devices because it's our third advantage because uh, most of the games with play to earn are for web and like um, about, I don't know, maybe 70% of people have mobile phones. 
And so he started like making games, uh, definitely for mobiles. And, and, uh, the, and like idea of making an ecosystem came to his mind. It was about, uh, I don't know, January of 2021. It's great. So before maybe three years ago, and there's like not much things like that. So you guys were early doers. Yeah, of yes. Kind of thing, yes. Yes, definitely. Even in Central Asia, I know like about uh, two or three companies that are starting now developing all those things. We know them with like, we're not competitors. We're like more like friends. And if they have any questions, so we just uh, answer and helping them. Because uh, even uh, when we talk about uh, investors like VCs, uh, most of them mm, don't know where the Kazakhstan is. Yeah. We're like, where are you from? Kazakhstan. Is it like part of Russia? No, no, no. <laughs> Russia here, Kazakhstan here. Like. <laughs> okay. And so how big is this market for now and the projection about the market size? Uh, if we are talking about the money uh, in 2021, uh, the, like, the whole market of g- gaming industry is uh, $180 billion. Okay. And 93 billions are for mobile gaming. Mm-hmm. And it is like uh, growing from year to year. And even if we'll have about, I don't know, two or three percent for, from that 93 billion, it will be okay for us for the first. And after that, when we like join uh, for our ecosystem about, I don't know, 10 or 20 games, mm-hmm. we'll have a like big piece of pie. At least we can get a part of another big ecosystem. And do you think about that, that or yeah. not? Yes, yes, we're, uh, we, we don't know how uh, like, uh, market will uh, like our ecosystem or not, but uh, according to results that we have now, mm-hmm. uh, seems like it is okay. We're like uh, going in the right way. Yeah. So you guys already big loyal audience customers, right? That uh, users, like yes, yes. We uh, we have well. users that are like uh, monthly by VIP, uh, like VIP status mm-hmm. or uh, posting. Like e- even we have. Uh, if you go to YouTube or like uh, and search for IDOS games or 2048 Cube, it's hyper casual games name. How do, how do you care those uh, loyal customers and how do you get the take the advantage, give the advantage to them? Oh, um, we have lots of chats, uh, for example, like in Telegram, it's like most popular. Uh, we, for example, if someone asks any question, even we have like, uh, for now we have loyal like uh, players or answering the questions like uh, without the community managers. Mm-hmm. And uh, before that, I was like super like uh, spending about, I don't know, three or four hours an- answering all the questions. Mm-hmm. And uh, even something is, uh, so- some people are toxic, you, you know, the players, yeah. like mm-hmm. the game is bad or it's something like that. I guess, good day, thank you for like, for your feedback, okay. And uh, we were like, it's, it's more like customer development. Yes. Uh, you know the feedback and you're working with it and uh, uh, you can find out like uh, what problems are in the game and if you solve like if it's not like super toxic little guy mm-hmm. it's okay and if you're talking about like uh, people who knows how, how uh, they have uh, played mo- uh, lots of games mm-hmm. and they are maybe they are more experienced even than you mm-hmm. the developer because uh, we are making games for like good for us and the market, for example, they cannot uh, like it. Yeah. And um, the main question is, how do you lo- uh, work with the feedback from other people? And uh, working like uh, working with community even helps you to find out lots of bugs or, or etc. They uh, send the screenshots. You know, say thank you for your feedback, and how can I help you? Or for example, uh, what moments in the game make you upset? Mm-hmm. And um, that's the point. So, okay, let's talk about your team. How many uh, guys are in your team? Right now? Uh, it's about 10 people. 10 people. Me. How many developers are there? Uh, most of them are developers. We've got uh, 3D modeler, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, also uh, script writers, script writers, and um, one concept artist. If it's okay, so you can talk. And how much investment did you raise? Then? Do you know your valuation and also other things? Uh, how do you manage your cash flow? And are you still bootstrapping now? And uh, mostly we have finished bootstrapping, <laughs> finally. <laughs> and we uh, made a pre-sale round 
uh, we have sold our tokens. Uh, it's like first public sale of tokens. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sold about uh, 200K in USDT. Uh-huh. And um, also we have one private investor and who bought also uh, not equity, in, uh, but tokens. Uh-huh. He's a crypto enthusiast and he liked our oh, projects. Great. And that's about 400K. The sum uh, raised from the public, from the crowd, and so there are other parties from that. Yes, one yes. Person. Also, we have, uh, we unfortunately didn't close our pre seed round. Uh, we were negotiating with um, a VC from Silicon Valley. And he, our valuation was 20 million. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, he was planning to uh, invest us 1.5 million dollars for the 7.5 percent in of equity. Nice, that's great. So, <laughs> but it's like unconfirmed valuation. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we cannot. <laughs> is it not confidential thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And thank you. Thank you for sharing <laughs> for this. And uh, the next thing is so I'm. I'm also interested in about uh we are in the same batch and we're like just classmates yeah you know and you know the guys uh, some guys are struggling for raising money and attracting the investors and and maybe some some people from some business from based on crypto just raising and uh, public offering things so how do you think is it more easy or it's the same um if we're talking about the crypto projects uh, it's not like uh, it's all, everybody know that most of them are fraud, frauds and scams. Uh, and um, if you're making hype, yeah, it is super like difficult, difficult to make good product after like uh, when the hype ends, and you will take lots of hates after that. And I I think uh, the main thing that we chose in like web3 and gaming development etc uh, because uh, the web3 is like it, it's uh, we believe that web3 is the future and um, all the things that are doing like for now some people could say like it is super cool innovative mm-hmm. and um, uh, these things uh, will be like normal for our children and all, all, all other descendants and um in traditional business, uh, if you if you think locally, it will be hard for you to like uh, uh, have an, any investments. And if you think like global, if you know that, for example, you can start in Kazakhstan and uh, after a few years you can go global, uh, all uh, all investors will believe in you and in your project. Mm-hmm. And also there is uh, there is a moment uh, what person is uh, telling about the project, like pitching. For example, um, some CEOs are super shy and even cannot uh, like talk to other people if it's not, uh, if someone doesn't bring like uh, by the hand, like this is uh, Jagur, this is Idos, like mm-hmm. something like that. And it's the main, uh, one of the uh, most popular problems of the founders. Yes. And uh, some people are, uh, don't, don't like to even to talk with his team because he, uh, during like uh, when he was a startup bootstrapping, he was alone <laughs> and like uh, some people may not understand, like we don't need so, so much people or etc. So I have to fix my question. Is it yeah. not more easy, just more potential, more opportunity? Mm. I think uh, crypto has more potential just in my humble opinion. Sure. And uh, let's talk about your uh, team culture. So, what is the most precious thing that your your team team culture mm-hmm. or maybe team core technology or something? Um, in our team, uh, I'm learning. Lo- I'm reading lots of books about like uh, company culture and how to grow it, even if you're super small. Um, for example, we got uh, in our office, we got the room where uh, all like uh, all our developers, all our employees can rest, have a meal and even play some like PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't allow people to work uh, like too long. For example, when you start at, at 10, you should go home like in seven. And like if some people stays 
uh, we ask them not to work too hard because uh, if you're like if he burns out <laughs> they will be like he will just uh, go home and won't come back it's, it happens very often <laughs> yeah, yes usually... for example if you're a founder it's okay like for you because yeah. you're like chasing your dreams and etc yeah. for employees no <laughs> yeah. yeah about running this kind of business wow what is the most the difficult challenges that you face it and how did you solve that or solving that oh first of all everybody lies <laughs> how do, what yeah. do you mean yeah even big vcs <laughs> ah, sure. yeah f- people are like uh, super liars even like ah hey like in the back no no <laughs> and acting like okay it's super cool 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 and talking yeah like, yeah we'll call you back then okay. no problem like it so zero <laughs> And after that, uh, when um, when when we are working with like development uh, games and etc., uh, there are lots of uh, things that are not um, uh, not bounded for people. For example, uh, with with people, uh, you can like uh, f- finish uh, solve all the things just by like. If you talk mm-hmm. and some something like with digits uh, you cannot deal yeah and they're telling the truth that's the like main point because I hated digit like the mass and etc before coming even this accelerator <laughs> during this actually I learned how to analyze lots of things I'm like uh, I have improved my knowledge in in product marketing and etc mm-hmm. yes and about the, your early adopters, so how did you get your early customers? That's the most difficult part of the every startups mm. products. Yeah. Uh, we actually were super lucky uh, because uh, our founder, Idos, uh, has been working with digital in digital marketing mm. since 2012 oh. for about for about 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. And he knows how to uh like uh, uh, he he goes he's super good at uh, customer acquisition tell us more about your approaches and the success yeah. cases um <clears throat> there are a few moments uh first of all like it's like traditional uh, meth- uh methods with uh, according to uh, uh google ads i don't know unity ads and etc mm-hmm. there are some uh, ad companies uh, like Aplovin, I don't know, Meta, um, or there is, an, I think it is Chinese Pangol. Uh, we have connected with all of them. Yeah. You just start like uh, Googling all those uh, ad networks and started uh, testing all of them. Yeah. The only tests. And some works and some don't. Yes, definitely. Okay, so some does it. Yeah. And so the, let's change the topic. Yeah. Tell about your country, Kazakhstan. You're basically from uh almaty right uh i live in almaty for now for about uh, five years but i'm from kislorda Kislorda. yes it is a uh, hot city in the south yeah sure and tell me about your country so well, what is the population level what, what is like startup ecosystem in here of course we're all in kazakhstan so. i think popularity of kazakhstan is about 17 million yes for now and um uh, startup community uh, started growing like uh, maybe three or four years ago actually we didn't uh, hear even like about Astana Hub at the beginning of this big uh, company and uh, now we're super proud of it because they're doing super cool and lots lots of work already done uh, we have connections with lots of countries even with uh, Silicon Valley uh, they're at, they're organizing trips. For example, in May we've been to Turkey with the head of uh, uh, Astana Hub mm-hmm. uh, and uh, also uh, Minister of Digitalization mm-hmm. went there with us. We were super shocked, surprised. Baghdad. Yes, Baghdad Musin. Yeah. And how's like the average salary of uh, Web three uh, developer, maybe senior engineer? Actually, yeah. it depends. For example, in Europe and such other countries. Um, it can go about 15, even 17k per month. And in Kazakhstan, I don't know how, uh, uh, what is the salary of seniors, but our juniors take about 1.5 to 
2K dollars. US state care. Yes. Yeah. What is the most common dream of the Kazakh young generation of IT people? Do they want to go abroad and work in some big companies or just stay here? Uh, most of the guys, most of uh, uh, Kazakhstan, like clever guys work for Google, Meta and other big companies. Uh, the second half uh, uh, starts to making their own startup. And some, uh, about 90% of startups like just die in the first years, like a few couple of years. And uh, after that, they go to the same. Because it, maybe there are uh, super like um, l- uh, lucky people who uh, work for big companies and after that uh, start their project. And they have like more uh, percentage to get success. Mm-hmm. But the uh, rest of them, mm, bad. So what what about you? What what is your background? Oh, mm, I actually worked as a sales manager in lots of companies. Uh, I worked since twenty zero nine, and um, I worked like I I had a few fuck ups. <laughs> I started like uh, my own business, but uh, it was a traditional business like retail, uh, and. Um, it was not good, but uh, I like didn't lost lots of money. That's uh, that was okay. But uh, when I I joined the IDOS games uh, at the August last year, uh, and when IDOS all, he was alone and he already published that shotgun game, and after that when I heard the idea and how it can like even uh, help people to earn some money because in some countries even like uh, earning about. Two hundred dollars per month. It, it, it like it's a good amount of money, mm-hmm. oh, wow. and uh, and actually we're uh, we're like uh, ma- making uh, like child's dream come true because we are me and Adels are super addicted to the game <laughs> in gaming. Since child, yes, <laughs> we played lots of lots of games. Even now, like playing Counter Strike, Dota, etc. And um, uh, our parents always told us, "Why are you playing so much? Does it can that?" Does it give you money? Yeah. And now it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It really does. Okay. I'll show it to your parents. <laughs> yeah, sure. What are you doing here? So you mean here, just go to the US. What the fuck is startup? Yeah. You never, never be achieved like that. <laughs> so what, what, what do you think about? Like one of the main reasons is um, we want to uh, make our country, our Kazakhstan, uh, known all over the world. For example, uh, there are a few stars, like for example, D- our DJ, Iman Bek, uh, had a Grammy last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, second day, we have a, we have a big singer, uh, Dimash Kodaibergen, he's super popular in China and all over the world. Uh, and now we want to uh, teach people how to play games, <laughs> how, how to make games. <laughs> this thing, right? Yeah, we, we, we like games so much. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> About your uh, entrepreneurship, so how, how do you manage your work-life balance or something and that kind of stuff? Um, I'm a good sales manager. That's uh, the problem with, I haven't got any problems with communicating people and uh, talk, start talking with people that you don't know. And it's, I think the commu- communication like skills, uh, I think it can help you uh, like, not even if you're a tech uh, entrepreneur, mm-hmm. but uh, the whole life, during the whole life. Uh, the second, I think uh, you, you should know how to focus because uh, when you start your project, uh, there will be lots of things that uh, uh, that pe- pe- uh, other people uh, will start offering you. For example, if we're we're making games, our own games, and there are lots of companies uh, like asking us to make a game for them, mm-hmm. and like we we just reject all the offers. We said we we must finish our ecosystem, and after that we can enter. Like if someone makes a game for you, we can uh, enter your project to our ecosystem and work together. Mm-hmm. That's so, main, I think like two main points for each entrepreneur. Yeah. So do you get, uh, in here? Do the guys doing side hustle jobs here and about your company? Do you guys do, do that? Thing? We no, we do not. In here, other startup companies. Uh, actually, I didn't hear about that. Maybe they're like, <laughs> don't tell us. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what what are your future plans? 
Oh, we got big plans. Uh, about, I don't know, two, two or three weeks ago, we've been to Abu Dhabi. Uh, we also visited uh, uh, Abu Dhabi Gaming Hub and uh, they're inviting us to be residents of their hub. We also have been to um, Ubisoft office in Abu Dhabi. That was super cool. U- Ubisoft is a ga- game developer. Yes, yeah. right? yes, yes. Uh, Assassin's Creed, Prince oh, of Persia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Ubisoft. So uh, also uh, saw guys from Microsoft. As you know, uh, Microsoft have bought Blizzard company. It's World of Warcraft. And also and Unity game engine. Right? Yes, Unity yes. Is from Microsoft. Yes, Unity Engine. Uh, there is a cool place called uh, Center of Excellence uh, from Unity, and you have if you have any questions, you can just ask them, and they will help you immediately. That was super cool because uh, sometimes customer support in that company <laughs> works really bad. Mm-hmm. You need to wait in the coding like time zones. You need to wait about uh, like four or five hours when their like uh, job starts, and um, Maybe in the near future, we plan to relocate, relocate there because uh, they're making uh, good, like all, all those things that should be in the gaming hub. And after that, we can return to Kazakhstan, be, build our own big hub and start making like Silicon Valley in Kazakhstan. Only for gaming. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we know how to make games, yeah. how to make interesting games. Yeah, sure, sure. What, what advice did you get? The most important advice from someone? One of them is Mike Fisher. He's a uh, ex uh, CEO of publishing in Square Enix, Sega and Epic Games. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was asking him for, uh, for an advice. And he told me that uh, CEO, uh, while you're being a CEO, uh, you cannot be everybody's friend, first of all, mm-hmm. because you're polite, etc. But you cannot be everybody's friend and um, don't forget to think uh, your inter- like uh, people in- inside the company. You can be like uh, super cool in communicating like for VCs or other companies, but do not forget to talk with your guys mm-hmm. because uh, one-to-one talking uh, during the lunch or just having a little walk uh, that will be super like, uh, and you can uh, understand uh, if there are any problems in your company. Mm-hmm. That's great. There's five more quick questions about yeah. it. What is the name of the book that you read last? Um, it is called Karma from Sadhguru. What's this about? How to make, how to live easier, how not be like, how reflect uh, for all, all those things that uh, around you, even like you heard about war in Ukraine, some problems in Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, problems in many countries. And you, uh, during uh, reading that book, I have learned how people are uh, like, how to say, they uh, start war just, uh, I don't know, just talking with each other and like, let's start a war. They do not think how, uh, how many cons- consif- consequences uh, after that? How like how many lives? How many people die after that? And that's the main question of karma: how not to make lots of bad karma? How to make your uh, karma good? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what do you worry about the most? Uh, worrying. Worry. Uh, for now, I'm worrying about the peace in like in Central Asia because like. Uh, it's frustrating. Uh, there are like uh, Russia started mobilization, and you don't know uh, what will what they're gonna do next. Like they went to Ukraine, and like <laughs> most of our boards are, are with Russia. Yeah, there can be lots of problems. That's the main idea that I'm worrying about for now. What is the one thing you cannot live without? Without, hmm. Uh, actually, for the last, I don't know, um, for the last 10 months, it, my laptop and phone <laughs> became my best friend. Okay. <laughs> Who are your heroes? Heroes? Yeah. Uh, you mean like 
leaving people or like uh, it's can, it's or just written like this just yeah, or, 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 <laughs> or it can be like superheroes <laughs> it could be um <laughs> i think flash flash don't, don't you know flash yeah, 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 sure <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't watch DC and I'm Marvel. Oh my so, god. Okay, okay. okay I'm sorry. Who, who I'm sitting with? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm, I'm just leaving. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> there will be some haters uh, after that. <laughs> so, yeah, and the last question is like, what is your, what's on your bucket list? Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bucket list? You mean like um, list of what to do? Ah, ah to do. Ah, yes. okay. Uh, for the for the like near future or like for the whole? lifetime. Uh, actually, I have I have a dream to have a possibility to uh, to travel whenever I want and wherever I want. That's why I'm like working hard now. And I maybe after like five or seven years, when I find a better CEO than me, mm-hmm. and <laughs> you'll I, be retiring. Yeah, I I I'll, I'll go like just traveling with my wife. Okay. Just yeah, I actually started enjoying our life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Officially started enjoying the life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think that's that then. So uh, thanks. Thank you for your time and thank you for inviting. Thank you. And so, yeah, and hey, this is Alex, a great guy. This is a guy who works uh, in Binance. <laughs> Just kidding. So, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. But now, now we're going to the football Kazakhstan versus Belarus, and uh, the stadium is waiting for us. And uh, bye bye. Bye.